Hi, welcome to this video about Jack Bros. Uh, I wanted to make this video because I find that oftentimes collecting expensive video games, the most expensive games don't always uh, pay off and aren't really the best games for the system. That's not always true. Some games are rare because they are great and were produced in limited quantities. Uh, Virtual Boy, of course, you know, is one of Nintendo's less successful systems. Some might call it a failure. Um, but it's got some great games on it, and strangely, uh, in this case, or maybe not so strangely, Jack Bros is the rarest game, I believe, for the system. Uh, I don't think there's any competition with Waterworld or other games at this point uh, in terms of rarity and collectability, but um, it's also one of the best games for the system that I've played. I only have a library of about eight games for my Virtual Boy. The entire library is very small, so that's actually a significant percentage of the library, but um, I wanted to do this video to give you a little taste of it. Jack Bros is hideously expensive on the American market. In fact, when I checked for this video, the um, I could only find two copies for the USA uh, at a quick search, and the single copy that was without box but with manual was around $500 listed. So I didn't check recent historical data, but that's that gives you an idea of what we're talking about. This, as you can see, is the Japanese version, which I picked up when I was very fortunate on a trip to Japan. I spotted it in a collectible store and um, saw that it was around 50 or $60 American. I don't remember what it was in yen, but I was like, okay, it's in Japanese. I know there's a bit of a language barrier. I know no Japanese whatsoever, um, but I will, well, I know Argato to say thank you, uh, but I don't know how to read any Japanese. And um, I thought I'd pick it up there. Uh, I did. And the gamble paid off because there is Japanese text in the game that makes it a little difficult sometimes to um, understand what's going on. There's kind of a fairy character that reminds me of the fairy from Ocarina of Time because she talks a lot. Um, every floor of the levels you go through, she will speak to you and um, kind of update you on what you're doing in the game. But um, I've managed to make do using GameFAQ. Uh, where someone has written out the English translation of what the fairy says in each uh, room that you enter. So as you can see, the documentation for the system is, of course, in Japanese, and um, I'm not going to really spend much time on that. There, uh, there is a manual included in the box copy I picked up, um, which is cool. I cannot read it, but I like having it. Um, I'm not much of a box collector. I'm more of a loose cartridge collector in general. In this case, they weren't you know, Japanese stores um, tend to focus on box, complete in box is a big focus for a lot of collectors in Japan, it appears. Um, I don't know if I'd be accurate to say this, but it seemed like almost strange, you know, it was rarer to see loose copies. Not not so much, at some stores there were loose copies, but in a lot of cases, you could tell they focus on the, the mint in box collector market. So again, you can see you know, the manual, and you can figure some things out if you use your mind um, and your intuition about games. For instance, these are the characters that you'll see on the character select screen when you're playing the game, and um, they give you kind of like their layout of like their strengths. You can see the star rankings of like their speed, their attack power, things like that. I've kind of deciphered by playing the game. And here you see kind of an image of like what the game is about. You go through mazes, kind of RPG-like mazes, and the goal is to jump down to the next floor, and you usually have to get keys to open a gate to do that. Um, there's an image from the game, kind of the famous red neon uh, look of the game. Um, but that's the manual. There in the background you can see my uh, completely currently functional Virtual Boy. They're tough to keep in working repair. Um, and I'll insert in the video here the uh, eBay name of the gentleman who's been kind enough to repair mine and get it back in working order. I kind of have a really problematic unit that's had some unusual problems, it turns out. Um, and getting a working Virtual Boy is fairly expensive, a guaranteed working. And then even when you do have them, they, they tend to have some problems. So be forewarned, if you're gonna get into the Virtual Boy, it's not without its hiccups. And sometimes you'll turn on the system and one eye will kind of be fuzzy and then it'll kind of go away and work. Or at least mine, mine's a little, like I said, mine's a little problematic, but there it is. And uh, take a look on eBay and talk to the gentleman in question if you would like to get one repaired. Last thing I'd say about the game before I get into some gameplay footage is that it's really tough to compare Jack Bros to another game, which is partly why I like it. I'm a big fan of twin stick shooters and it's got elements of a twin stick shooter in it, but it's also like a dungeon crawling RPG in some elements, but 
Uh, again, it's tough to describe it. It's a little bit of a maze chase game, too. Basically, you're in kind of RPG-esque dungeons, but they're very narrow corridors, so it's really hard to avoid encounters, but it's it's uh, not RPG encounter style. It's twin-stick shooter style, and most enemies go down with one or two hits, uh, and so, you, you know, the Virtual Boy controller has two control pads on it, and you use... Um, one of them to fire and one of them to walk and you know that's the basic gameplay you're looking for keys to open the gates to jump down to the next floor as I mentioned and um, and up to level 30 I haven't gotten past level 30 yet um, they're short rounds each level is probably about a minute maybe two at the most unless it's a boss fight and um, I often uh, can clear a level you know in about a minute but um, each level I it, up to level 30, almost always they're dumping new enemies on you every level or two, and so with new attributes, like some can't be attacked from the front, some move quicker than others, some chase you, some take multiple hits to defeat, some are best avoided. Um, so there's a lot of variety, and it's really fun. The music is incredible, as you'll hear. Um, it's one of the best selling points of it, um, since your head is basically inside the game, the, the Virtual Boy, I was going to say the Game Boy. Inside the Virtual Boy, since you put your eyes into it, uh, the music is very expressive uh, and very, uh, very interesting. I highly recommend trying it at least once in your life if you're a Nintendo fan or just fan of retro tech in general. It's like having a Game Boy stereo effect around your head uh, of chiptune music kind of playing um, at a pretty loud and, and really cool sonic effect uh, when you're using a Virtual Boy. So, And Jack Rose has some of the best music I've heard on any uh, Virtual Boy cartridge. So with no further ado, I'll jump into some gameplay. Gorgeous, gorgeous music. Genuinely, like, beautiful. Can't read it. Because the translation, you know, I have to look to the internet to get the translations, but I have it turned up rather loud so that the music can be heard in the video. Uh, so it's a little loud on my ears right here, but hopefully you get the picture. are immersive, it's got that 3D like layered effect. As you can see it's, well you can't see, but it's more like layers in a view master for those who remember that. Not really 3D like the 3DS, but um, you can see the DNA of the 3DS here. Ah. These, these, block, these enemies are really easy in the early stages. Really, the first stages are such warm-ups, it's like it doesn't get harder to level 2 or 3. Too much talking from the narrator sometimes, but if I could read Japanese, it would help. Gotta, gotta give to this music, it's just awesome. And there's like Bomberman type enemies here. Ah, oh, I got a speed potion. I'm moving at light speed, and I'm invincible, I think. You get really OP when you get those potions. This one has some of those boulder puzzles in it. Pretty simple at first, like uh, Sokuban, I think that is in Japanese. The block pushing puzzles, I think I have that right. Sokuban. There's sort of some light Sokuban elements in these early stages. Maybe it gets uh, more intense later, but right now it's just learning how to. Again, I'm taking hits here. I'm not being very careful. I'm trying to narrow it. Ooh, I'm taking some serious hits. 
Oh, this is serious. Looks like I lose his fight if I'm not careful. Got him. No problem. Boss 2 complete. Got the password. Uh, I got some bonus time, although I didn't do so well. You can really rip through these early levels, as you can see. The graphics are just so stunning. I wish you could adjust the brightness on this game, but I do not think you can. This game is, like, set, locked at one brightness, from what I can tell. So you just deal with it the way it is. Back down to the floor 10. Uh, some light soap on again. Pushing the blocks. Not easy. It's just a maze. Just running around in a maze right now. This game is just one of the best. It's so fun. It's actually, and actually, if there have been more games like this in Virtual Boy, I don't know if it would have saved the system, but it's just one of the more fun ones. It's got good controls, it's got entertaining graphics, it's got a kind of neat story. It's got lots of different mechanics and ideas going on. I think I said it in the games already. It's fun to play. Not something you can say about every virtual game. I, I like a lot of them, though. This one's one of the better. And not just because it's expensive, really. It's one of those cases where the most expensive game in the system is actually really, really good. I think my highest floor is like 28 so far, but I have the password for that. I'm just replaying this level for the sake of the video. That's one thing you can't afford to do in this game. You can't afford to like walk right into the enemies. You need it, your energy is your, the time that you have is also your energy bar, so you got to be careful not to take any hits so that you don't decrease the time left for the levels because that is literally the point of the game. My arms are getting sore from sitting in this position, I don't have any more levels I'm going to do right now. If you kill the poultry, I see a 50, uh... 50 seconds on the clock, it's really valuable, so you want to chase down a poultry ice whenever you see one. It's, up here. it's the vampire bat boss, he's a he ton of time. He's not hard, I'm just riding the conveyor belts, trying to avoid taking hits from the bats. Oh, boss fight, it's turning into a real boss fight. He's getting sloppy. I got him. Area 3 clear. And uh, I think that's all I'm going to record right now. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I encourage you to play. I encourage you to get your hands on a copy of Jack Rose, even if you have to buy the uh, Japanese version like I did. Thanks for watching.